ending, ladies and gentlemen, as seen on the Daily Wire podcast. Ah, the next No! No! It's also JJ, get close. Get close My name is Marcos. I will be your host today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wants to be on the daily show i do uh, too um my name is marcos i'll be your host here today we're doing mas o menos mexicanos and we're talking about what i found out to be the most mexican american experience at all going to the pulga but i'm not alone searching through the uh technical side looking for all through all the wires and bullshit we got oh it's me <laughs> I've never been to one. Actually, I've only been to like one or two. But I have other things that are, are of equal or lesser value uh, on the conversation tonight. But also, I'm Samuel, because you went with your Spanish name. So It just, it just happened when I hear the music. Samuel Gonzalez. There you go. That's, my, that's who I am. And joining me on this side with the 8-bit awesome shirt we got. So yay. <laughs> Was that words? Yeah. Okay. That's how my grandma says my name. That's adorable. I love that. Y'all have to talk about the 956 Pulga on TikTok. I didn't know that they had one, but Pul- uh, Pulgas are marketing themselves in all sorts of different ways. Um, oh, JJ's mic is off. Whoops. So there's a crank on there. Uh, one, two, three, four. four. There you go. Turn that back up. I got the number wrong. So technically it was number two that should be shut off, which is JJ, TJ's. All right. Can you all hear me now? They can hear me. And JJ? Hello. So what's your name again? So yeah, yeah. There you go. I'll edit it to make it right. <laughs> and that's what your grandmother calls you. No, that was not intentional. I'm not holding JJ back. Savage Mandy's here and not only che- cheered for you, but was everyone was saying your mic was off. So I apologize. I mean, it's new. It's a new system, everybody. These are look at these new arms. My arms. There's I can't hold on to a mic over here. This is really weird. Mine's already broken. Yours is already broken. Yeah. What happened? It's flaccid. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so it was always going to be flaccid, JJ. <laughs> but sounds good. We all sound good. JJ is live. Marcos, what a great intro you did all by yourself. I know. It's like I wasn't coached or anything. Exactly. Not at <laughs> all. <laughs> um, but no, um, it was funny researching this topic because normally there isn't a lot for Mexican-American culture in general. But I found two essays. That was it. That's all there is for this. Like two dudes? No. <laughs> that was a bad joke. Come on. It was right there. It was right there. You want some of this chili lime salt? Yes, see. Oh. Um, we're drinking mangonados over here. It's oh. way at the bottom, so you're good. You can just cash it. Is that what those are? It's agua fresca. Can can I have one? Sure. Thank you. JJ with the beverages. Joke was lame. Talk about butt. No, Juan Solo, we're not talking about <laughs> butt sex. I will. But DJ Lemon was thinking the same thing. You said there was, but you were saying. I've gotten was, plenty of butt sex at the Pulga. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Did you get a they, good deal? Oh, yeah. oh I, I, I um, <laughs> will put a twigger, trigger warning right at the top of this episode. Uh, I'm sorry, but because a lot of this has to do with uh, a lot of really, really old Hispanic men. There is going to be a little bit of animal cruelty. Oh, li- crap. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that where, that's where this is going. Uh, there's going to be uh, some bad language, but it is it is like, I'm sorry if you're squeamish about that kind of stuff. It's just part of, that comes with it. When you have an old 80-year-old that just walks up to a stand and is like, all right, this is what I'm selling. <laughs> well, I'm excited for this one because, like I said, I don't have much experience with this, and a lot of people don't know what pulgas are. I don't know it by that name. What do you know it by? Swap meat. Okay, so that's, that's very... I don't know, maybe a California thing. Yeah. Because there's flea markets. Because I've heard flea markets. I've heard swap meats. Uh, there's the, another thing, place called the Cherry Auction, which that was the thing in one of my neighborhoods where that was where mm-hmm. the swap meat was. Um, so... That's funny, because one of the most world-famous... Um, Pulgas is in San Jose, California. Right. And I've never been to that one, even though my brother went to school out there, you know? So, um, I, that we was. should have gotten one this weekend. This we past should. weekend. I actually went and drove by one, and I was like, oh, there's. Because I was going to uh, San Marcos, and there was like, mm-hmm. oh, the flea market right there. And I'm like, I always thought that was a weird name. Like, do you know the root of that name of why it's called a flea market? Obviously, other than the obvious implications. Well, uh, apparently flea markets come from France. Uh, the the first idea of it, and it's selling old furniture. Right. And it, you would get fleas from it, which is why. Oh, uh, well, that, I understood that that might have been the thing. I didn't know it was French, though. Get yeah, fancy. Yeah, the first idea, because, I mean, people have been exchanging goods the way that they do at uh, Pulgas all the time. Right. But the, uh, the first idea of a flea market, and I don't know the French word because I don't speak French. Uh, I did Pulga. look. 
I'm sure it is. It was Marquete de something. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. Latin based. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah, I'm not touching that. <laughs> JJ is the only French speaker here. You speak French? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sacre bleu. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Qui coupe le fromage? <laughs> you make the cheese? Who cut the cheese? Cut the cheese. Oh, who cut the cheese? Sammy heard pulga and he thought of lice. Wrong insect. But um, no, uh, pulgas have, it's not even the same word in Mexico. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very Mexican-American, uh, mostly a Tejano thing. Uh, they use uh, tianguis is what they use. Tianguis? Yeah. Damn. Never even Oh, that's about for it. any market that's not a supermarket. Yeah. That's uh, any outdoor market. So if you see like a bunch of fruit vendor stands. Like a farmer's market? Yeah, that's a tianguis. Okay. Yeah, I talked to one of my friends about it, and they um, they had three different words, depending on... Oh, it's like Yuki. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> depending on what you were trying to get. So, at a, at a Mexican, at a Tejano Pulga, you can get everything. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that in a second. But in a Mexico, that if you wanted to find toys, figurines, and nostalgia type stuff, mm-hmm. um, it's called Los Sapos. Okay. I'd want to go there. I love, tr- I love me. You guys know how much I love trinkets and Legos and other nonsense. I'd buy knockoff Legos at that place. I thought you just like toads. <laughs> no. Um, and then it's uh, Poluca, Fayuca. Sorry, I, the, I misspelled the Y. Um, if it's just random stolen shit. <laughs> See? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fell off the back of a truck. Hey, <laughs> for legal purposes, though, I wouldn't say I'd go there. <laughs> hey, hey. Peter Pan says. Peter Pan says. Might need to turn that down a little bit. That was, a little, that was very spooky. But. We're and then Tayungas is just, uh, in, it's the fancy outdoor market. So, mm-hmm. like, where you find nice clothes and stuff like that. Uh, at least that's the way I explained the The person explained to me, she also said, that's southern Mexico. It'll change as you go up and down. That's the thing. Mexicans are not a monolith. That's also a big-ass country. <laughs> a lot of people forget. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like you look at the United States and you look at Mexico. It's like, oh, yeah, no, it's long as shit. From, from the very southern tip to the north, completely different things. So. Yeah, from Chiapas to Coahuila and... And then, I mean, even when we talk about food, it's completely different. Right. Because yeah. 300 miles into Texas, you're a yeah. whole different world. Yeah. And Mexico City seems to think that quesadillas don't require cheese. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, that's the thing. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, you have to specify that you want your quesadilla with cheese. So, Mexico City que- quesadilla? Is that look at it? <laughs> it's just me- this is a big debate in Mexico. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, a real debate. I mean, I would want. If I'm eating a quesadilla, I would expect cheese. I don't like cheese, so there's I'm no, actually okay with no it. There's no queso in a quesadilla. <laughs> okay, that's just... Why do, they put, why, why do they put dirt in that? It's all black. I don't know why. Oh, that's the original color. You have to dye the corn most of the time. Oh, yeah. man. That, that looks, looks like stone. It's fine, though. Handmade. I get it. It's fancy. All over Mexico, women squat outside around a comal. Let's I'm see. Pre- Press tiny ovals of corn dough to make tortillas. They'll fill them uh, with your choice of sh- uh, shredded and marinated ch- uh, chicken, tinga, squash blossom, and corn fungus. Mm. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that's, <laughs> that's the tasty was. part of the corn. <laughs> oh, no, apparently that's like a delicacy, the corn fungus. Like, it is. No, yeah, I yeah. wasn't kidding. Oh, yeah, I, heard that. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, fucking key. So they're just selling dias. <laughs> and I hate that joke, but it's wonderful. <laughs> Also, these beers are very good. Yeah, no, it's so was fresca. I was fresca. I got them from Pulga. Nice. <laughs> a little bit of alcohol, and then we got some salt in there too. Yeah, I got, apparently there's another pack in there. So go ahead. Ooh. <laughs> but just to go in, into a little bit of detail, uh, Pulgas became like a mainstay, which is, explains why my grandpa loved them so much mm-hmm. and why he took me there every weekend. Um, it's the place where they would feel community. Uh, yeah. our, our grandfathers um, and it explains why everything was fucking there you can buy fruta um, use tools uh, there was wrestling and <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that I didn't know there was yeah. wrestling there yeah there's also a lot of musicians there too because well, I went to one and there's I'll talk also about- like really good coffee <laughs> <laughs> which which is somehow just made on a really shitty uh, like, <laughs> coffee maker. Yeah, it, er, or if you go to like one of the bigger ones, it might they might have like actual authentic cafe de olla. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in the San Antonio one, I saw that there the one time I went. But uh, 
Yeah, the coffee. I've never had a bad cup of coffee at a pulpe. <laughs> right. Um, the one time I went, I was a little kid. And I don't know why we were there. We never – I think – hmm. I'd have to think about the history of it because – my dad never went. My mom never went. Now, I know why my mom didn't get went, didn't go to those because she had another realm of finding discounted delightful things. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But we went one time, I think, to support somebody. I think one of our relatives set up a shop and we're like, let's go check out what they got, right? Mm-hmm. I remember being so fascinated by all the just trinkets, little like furni- wood furnitures, little wooden toys, Cheapy knockoff uh, transmorgraphers, uh, you know, uh, power heroes. You know, I love knockoff the luchadors toys. that are always like this. The luchadors that are always <laughs> like this, right? You know, uh, two points of articulation, their hips swivel, and that's about it. S- uh, super spider ombre or whatever the fuck. I love all that kind of stuff. I love that aesthetic. I love the fake. Well, that wasn't at the time. I was a lot younger, but fake beats, you know. The the uh, sew me headphones like I love designing and printing knockoff stuff like knockoff stuff cracks me up. And for a while there, I remember buying um, the Pokemon. That was what I ended up getting that day is I got a knockoff Pokemon toys. You remember the ones that came with the little Pokedex that you could shoot and blast? Yeah. Solid Pokemon toys. I got a bunch of knockoffs. I got Squirtle, (laughs) War Tortle, Blaster. I got the original three and all their evolutions. And I was like, I know this is fake. But it's like a quarter of the price, and I could use my pocket money to buy it. Fuck yes. I love that stuff. And then now go, having gone when I was like an adult once, just like the fine leather goods. If someone put the faux leather watches. I like – I don't need the fanciest stuff. I've never been the type of guy that's like, oh, I need it to be authentic. I need it to be the best thing. If it functions and it works, then I'm about it. And that's, that was what I liked about them so much, at least the one time I went there. I'll talk about my other experiences in terms of getting deals and whatnot at another time. But that's what I like about them. Uh, I'm bringing up something that Savage Mandy brought up because it is a staple of that. Like, whenever I would go to these markets, it's like, oh, um, winter's coming. We got to get one of these. And it's uh, Colcha de San Marcos. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Those things, I guess I can't, I can't have them. That's why I don't have one. Because uh-huh. I, I run got hot. one. Oh, I run hot. I run I hot. Have three. <laughs> <laughs> I will be a thousand degrees inside one of those. Like that. If you want warmth, get one of those blankets. Tiger. What fucking snow? Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they're so comfy. They're so soft and comfy. I just wish they weren't so hot. You don't even choose the animal. You, the animal chooses you. Right. right. Yeah. Well, you, choose the, you choose the color and then whatever color that animal so happens to be. Like yeah. show some of them right there. Get they all get donated. They all get handed down. Right. <laughs> I see. was passed down the, the tiger. Lion. I got me a green tiger. Yeah. I think my cousin has a red tiger. The horse yeah. is super common too. Yeah. That's probably legitimately at a pulga. I can tell by the, the chain <laughs> prints in the back. <laughs> And that's the thing. You go and you throw it in the wash. Shit, you're fine. You're fine. No fleas, no nothing. Best best blanket you'll ever have in your life. Um, I think – I may be wrong, but I think this is the blanket that they had to stop making because they were so successful. Yeah, they ran out. So, yeah. yeah. So, that's actually the story. So, it's like the Covia San Marcos, like the actual company that makes it. They sold so many and they lasted so long to the point where like my, my cousin's dad – you know how thick they are, right? It's now the mm-hmm. size of like a fucking sheet because of how long he's had it and how much he used it. And he still uses it to this day. And they wouldn't buy new ones because they were so well made. They were so warm and they kept together so after so many washes that they just could not make any. They couldn't sell anymore because everyone had their one that they handed out generation after generation. At this point, we're probably at generation four now with little babies coming up that had their grandparents blanket. And it's still useful and it's still warm and still comfy. That's what I'm saying. It's the same one. Oh, the Korean knockoffs went out too? <laughs> oh, she's saying the Korean knockoffs took over the market. Well, I mean, that's possible too. That's possible too. But you know when you got the real shit. The real shit is it's about, you know, five feet, six by six feet, 37 pounds. <laughs> 
DJ this Lemon's like wearing it to graduation. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, I got the horse one right now. <laughs> graduation wasn't in summer. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. I do like Savage Man. He's put Green Tiger, Red Tiger, <laughs> Mexican Power Rangers. <laughs> Jordan said I saw the one with a pit bull on it. <laughs> Jordan came by the house. Jordan returned one of my dishes. I gave him a, a, a container. Uh-huh. Like a year and a half later, he's like, I brought it back for you. Which Tommy has like two of mine. But he goes, not only that, he goes, you got women there? Yes, man. Maggie's here. <laughs> he's working, so I know he's working right now. So he's watching us while he's working. <laughs> hey, man, if he's happy, he's happy. Yeah. Um, well, the Korean one's just as good. Uh, I can't imagine they are, but they're close enough, and the price difference is big enough to where it'll be worth it for the savings. But an original one, you can't beat them. I can't. I, I, the, from what I've experienced, the few times I've I've had ours, you know, because I don't have access to it. Well, uh, I'm going to show a little bit of the vibes at, at a pulga just because it's just like we can talk about it all day, but y- you do got to experience it a little bit. That dude is probably literally like shouting out deals in between songs. Yeah. <laughs> and they're drunk, like not on my muscle. <laughs> Fucking. Si quieres un Nintendo, visita Alma. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. And then um, this dude's famous. I don't know um, what exactly his story is. I just know he's appeared on my TikTok a lot, and he's a black dude that lives way down in the valley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's like when you buy a three dollar um, CD from La Pulga. I <laughs> oh, yeah, see this one. Wanna be on Paula? no that's what they use that joke for uh any uh cumbia version of any pop song yeah there's like bruno mars ones or he's like singing to a fucking cumbia background it's like that's the thing you never know what you're gonna get and i've been wanting to go to one recently because uh well what's the next topic i don't want to get too far ahead because i have no you just go this is a little bit more freeform this is our fun episode okay the next episode might also be fun but the one after that good afternoon dnd tiktok oh my god no um facebook marketplace is the new polka for me anyway people just put their wares out and they offer for discounted rates Usually new in box a lot of times, or at least somewhat new in box, like with all the pieces together. And I've just been buying shit left and right. And so I would buy a fucking random CD if it meant that it was 50 cents. I don't care. If I was promised the new uh, Harry Styles CD and it was a Mexican version of that, I'd actually be more happy that that happened. So, like, I've been wanting to just go visit. Once I saw that one when I was traveling south, like I said earlier, I've been really wanting to just go and see what my real adult money could get and how little self-control I'd have. Really. Like, just to see what stupid shit I would buy of things I don't need because they're cool and they're cheap. Oh, I have plenty of those stories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, uh, feel free to, to say that um, this is the part where you just, what's the stupidest, funnest thing you've ever bought at the Pulga? Stupid? I can answer that with one. <laughs> It's both the stupidest, coolest, and funnest thing I've ever bought. I bought three stick nunchucks at the pool. <laughs> Wait, three stick nunchucks? Yeah. I don't know what their actual technical name is. Oh, so is it like a bar in the middle and two on the ends? Yeah. Oh. They're from the 36th Chamber of Shaolin. <laughs> I think it came bundled in with that DVD. <laughs> so you were out here just all like, can you look up three three stick nunchucks? I think it's actually called a, like a breakable staff, but I know what he's talking about. <laughs> So, like, so did you just see it and go, like, I need to have that? It was just a table of random assorted crap. Um, <laughs> like, Oh, by the way, on the note of a, t- a random assorted crap, this is what Pulgas look like sometimes. Yeah, similar <laughs> to that, only it was more like hardware and toys right. and, like, just... Power drills. Yeah. Random assorted things. Yeah, there was, you know, a Power Ranger next to a miter saw for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> right. And several angle gl- grinders. And... <laughs> At first, I thought it was, like, those old-school tent poles that you just, like... Yeah. I thought it was those, and I grabbed them, and then I un- they unraveled, and I was like, wait, these are fucking three-stick nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then you immediately started playing with it. Yeah. And then you were like, how much is this? 
three dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Legit. It's like you were there. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one dollar for each stick. <laughs> we got a challenge from Savage Mandy that I think we're going to do. Dude, y'all should go to the Pulga and then do a <laughs> countdown of the this top is, five dumb things that you oh buy. This is something I suggested already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually down for that entirely. I'm down for that absolutely entirely. Um, I've suggested that list and uh, top five fake songs or fictional bands. All right. We'll put those to the list. I mean, you said only, that last time. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll it's keep, our top I'll five tra- next lists. All right, <laughs> I'll keep I'll keep track of it. That'll be it for June and July. Then we got it exactly. Uh, actually, considering the pre-show, I think we should do top five like worst people. Then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought we were going to do a tier list of garbage. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing our top ten misogyny tier list, bottom tier list. Um, the goof. I mean, look it. I'll go. Up, give me like two seconds. I'll be right back. I'll, I'll show you all the dumb things I've bought in the last month. From the Facebook Marketplace pool guy. Give me a second while you guys, while you talk about what you did. Well, my story is not about something I bought. It's just that it's a story that, but what my grandpa bought my grandma because uh, it, he was trying to do something sweet and it was not very <laughs> sweet how things ended up. Um, and this is why I said there was a trigger warning at the fir- at the beginning. Um, so there's a lot of rules on exotic birds and coming to the United States. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those. <laughs> so, um, fish and game is not exactly at these flea markets most of the time, or whoever the fuck checks that, like, your things are legal. Uh, <laughs> I think that would be fishing. I can tell you later on that the FBI goes there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a really funny story. <laughs> and that's as Ozzy brings up Elm Creek P- Pulga. So, um, <laughs> Wait, the FBI shows up to the Pulga? <laughs> yeah. Immigration, I can maybe understand as I, much as I hate it, you know. But... <laughs> What's what's what crimes are happening? That well, need to be- let's let him tell. Well, I, I, I got one crime, and then we'll go to the other crime, and then we'll talk about the cool stuff you bought. Yes. Um. So the crime. So macaws were highly illegal in the night. <laughs> <laughs> <There's a fucking laughs> macaw. Especially the blue ones. Especially the blue ones. They don't exist anymore. (laughs) No, there's two. I saw Rio. No. No, They were 12 years ago and they're all dead. Right, and they had babies. They failed. There's still at least two. Incest doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's why there's still at least two. Like, it takes a while for them to mature. (laughs) That's a different bird. The the blue macaws still exist. It's a different bird. I know what you're talking about, but it's... I'm not going to look it up right now. But at least this was a red macaw. Okay. (laughs) So, Border Patrol has ne- was not, or Customs was not on their game as much as they used to. They didn't have x-rays and shit. It was a dude with a mirror that walks around your car. <laughs> and then you would, then he would sell these things at the Pulga. Um, and they would do, everybody would hide shit from produce to... Which is really bad. <laughs> Pro- surprisingly, produce is really bad because of all the, uh, not speaking of, fleas and mites and stuff that can be transferred to other shit. So, I get that. Birds also, same thing, but still. Well, they transport macaws by getting them drunk. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Every sentence you say gets more and more bizarre about this whole situation. Well, that's how they don't make noise when you put them in the trunk of your car. Wow. <laughs> Exact opposite of humans. <laughs> you put me drunk in a trunk, I'm gonna make a lot of noise. <laughs> God. And then um, they bring them to the house. Then they see which ones are alive. Which ones are alive? They put in a cage, and then you buy them at the centro for twenty bucks. <laughs> they have to have the worst hangover the next. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the jungle. <laughs> Now I'm in a cage in somebody's house. What I've woken noise? up in some strange places after a bender, but <laughs> a holy ra- fuck. <laughs> a random in a Mexican cage family. in the pulga? <laughs> uh, well, no, that one I've done a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a random Mexican house. No, um, I got to get these mics right. Yours is flaccid too, huh? Mine's fl- <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. I got to tighten them, so... I have a new one of these inbox that I've yet to do for adult money, but this was half price and the guy was trying to get gas money. So I bought this fucking sick ass X-Wing and I, and it was like missing some pieces, but I finagled it and made it work. 
So this was 20, bu- 20 bucks, 20 bucks off. Uh, I showed this one. I've showed all this already on the show. Uh, I bought this Kool Aid for for thirty bucks, I believe, and someone mm-hmm. donated some money. Yeah, yeah, it's like forty from Target originally, and it's a giant Kool Aid, Maggie. It's fucking awesome. And he says hi, and he's the size of a real pitcher, and it brings me great joy. <laughs> Maybe like- Maggie, you shut up. These aren't real pull up prices. These are Facebook Marketplace real things. Racist, Jordan, shut up. <laughs> and then of course. The giant Lego set for the NES. I bought it for 150 bucks. That's like $130 off. It's my favorite thing in the world. And my dad was super proud that I bought it. He was very happy for me, unlike what Tommy believed, that he'd fucking hate me. But no, this shit, if they had one of these, uh, La Pulga, I would fucking buy it the same speed as I bought it on Facebook Marketplace. Well, that is, that is kind of... fucking awesome. I, uh, we'll tell the other illegal and, story after this. And it's, at nef- it's a nefarious piece of material. I don't know where they got it. I don't know why they took $150 off. And it's not my place to fucking ask. How much for Tommy to steal it? <laughs> <laughs> 200 <laughs> I can't even replace it for 200 That's the thing. Shit. <laughs> Ooh, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Serenity. Um, on the note of like random Nintendo nostalgia, um, I did put out a little bit of a poll. I do that whenever we do these kind of shows. A lot of people, if it wasn't for the Puglia, would not have got into their nerddom. Yeah, it's a good way to get accessible because it's it's kind of like an older brother. Like if you don't have an older brother, you go to the Puglia and find the things that they would have thrown out or the whoever's. <laughs> You know, older child throughout when they went away for work or college or whatever. Or when they wanted to buy the new PlayStation. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. So you all, have- all my consoles up until I worked were sold off in the Pulga. So like. Damn. And then now they even have those knockoff ones with like a fi- like 825 oh, yeah. games. Now in I one. wouldn't be able to sell shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I- if I wanted a Super Nintendo, well, I had to say goodbye to that old Nintendo. Exactly. And all my games. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they have like those little cartridges where it's like 185 NES, Super NES, uh, Game Gear games all in one because they're all uh, emulated. <laughs> yeah. And so like now kids got a fucking plethora of that kind of shit, man. It's awesome. Well, uh, uh, our friend Alfred literally did buy that. Um, I forgot what, the, forgot the, what he calls the, it. The, the retro pie. The retro pie. Yeah. He calls it a pie. He's like, "Can I borrow your pie?" Yeah. Uh, he bought it at the Pulio for yeah, sure. Because there's like official ones, and then there's like the knockoff, knockoff ones that are pre-built in China, like that are even lesser material. And those are the ones where they'll break. Oh, in the 30 ones seconds. that come installed with board games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like a thousand and one games, and half of them are duplicates, and the other half are are Mario Brothers, and the other half are porn. What's the porn game with Custer raping Indians or whatever it is? That is Custer's, Custer's Revenge. <laughs> Why I know that? Because it's famous, even though it's infamous, I guess. Yeah, it's that's yeah. an awful, awful game. There was a Tetris knockoff that was better. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was it a knockoff of Custer's Revenge, or was it a Custer's Revenge skin on Tetris? It was a knockoff Tetris game that was also porn. <laughs> oh. I don't know if I want to know. Uh, what it, mm. it was just the naked lady in the background, so you clear the, the Tetris oh! Oh, though that's motivation. I'm okay with that. Yeah, exactly. That's I thought the Lego piece. It's way like... better than Custer's Revenge. <laughs> if you're gonna play a horny game. Play that one. Was it Leisure <laughs> Suit Larry? That's a horny game too. I've never actually. I don't know what any of the gameplay looks like because I know what the gameplay looks like for Custer's Revenge because you don't yeah. really need to censor it. It's already pixelated. Oh, but it's still pretty bad. <laughs> somehow it's pretty bad even when they're doing it. Even in eight bit, Custer's Revenge is not a good fucking clip to go look up. Welcome everybody to the Manscaped Dad. Did you know that Manscaped has helped over eight? million people with their body grooming needs and guess what i'm one of those people because the fine folks manscape gifted me this right here the beard hedger and i talk about it a lot i talk about it a lot because i use it a lot i use it on my head i don't know if you're supposed to but i use it on my head i use it on my face i get my mustache nice and clean like i did before the show and you can have this and a whole plethora of other manscaped accoutrement if you go to manscaped.com and use coupon code MEX20, you can get 20% off and free shipping off the whole shebang. You know how much a shebang is? You could take 20% off of it, all of it. That is so much shebang. So if you go ahead and use that coupon code, you can get yourself the Beard Hedger. You can get yourself the Weed Whacker 2.0 for your nose or for your ears. You can get yourself the Lawnmower 4.0. They're always upgrading. They're always getting better, just like the Maxillons. And when you use coupon code MEX20, it helps us grow. It helps Manscaped become the powerhouse. And 
and, and keeps the innovation going over there because they are the powerhouse in face grooming, body grooming, general grooming. So help us out. Help them out. Help yourself out. It's summer. It's going to get hot and sweaty. It ain't getting colder. I, I hate to tell you, it's not going to get any better than this as of this moment. And it'll cool and it'll get warmer. And it's going to get real hot. And you want to make sure that you're nice and decluttered on your body, on your face, and on your junk. So, use that code coupon. Code MEX20 for 20% on free shipping. Manscaped.com. Your balls, your body, your face, and I will thank you. And you want me to thank you, don't you? Exactly. We'll be right back, or back to the show, or there might be more commercials. I don't know. But when you use Manscaped, you help us. And the more you use Manscaped, the more you hear about Manscaped, because Manscaped's awesome. And I think you're awesome. But you and Manscaped? Well, that's just an awesome marriage. Do your nuptials. Manscaped.com. Bye. But on the note of illegal stuff, just because this is a funny story, and I forgot, I forgot it until JJ brought it up. Why is the FBI doing uh, the <laughs> Boonga? Well, okay, illegal bird things. Okay, no, the FBI doesn't care about birds. They don't care about birds. <laughs> okay, <laughs> enlighten me, because I, I did see some of the responses in our Instagram. If you go to Instagram, we ask questions. <laughs> And you could answer some of the questions that can be brought up here. And you had asked on Instagram, what were some of the most interesting purchases you've made yeah. at La Pulga? And some people didn't even know what La Pulga was. And then the other half, at least two or three of them. Well, this okay. isn't one of the – I mean, we'll go through those responses if you want to. But this one was just funny because it was uh, – so the Pulio is also I don't know the full story because this story came from Paco. Somebody got papers illegally at the Pulio. Right. <laughs> right. Paco mentioned that to me too. And he was like proud of it, like super excited. I was like, what kind of printing presses they got in the Pulio to make that shit happen? I mean, in the 1980s and 90s, paper it didn't need to be that thorough just That's yet. Fair. They didn't have the holographic <laughs> stickers or whatever, watermarks. I'm pretty sure I still have a dollar from that era that I'm like, oh, I could make this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I worked at the casino, getting those old hundreds were a pain in the ass. Because it's like, the marker doesn't work on them. No, oh, that's right. They, the have, actual cloth paper. they have no counterfeiting measures built into them. Like, modern hundreds have a little bar. If you hold a black light to them, you can see the bar. It'll say its value. Right. And you can also see like a little hologram of Ben Franklin's face. Right. And you can even scratch them. They have an embossment in them. Yeah. You can't do that with an old hundred. Old hundred ain't got shit. (laughs) Old hundred and a one are the same. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man. I don't know. Well, it's at the beginning of every movie that you ever saw in the 2000s. Like, don't steal. Piracy is a crime. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Are they never pirated movies? Yep. Yep. God damn. That was the second time they pinched him, too. (laughs) Could they do something better with their time? Well, there's there's some backstory that we're jumping over here. You can go ahead and tell it. (laughs) Okay. So, the guy that they pinched was... A prominent business owner in Eagle Pass. <laughs> oh, this is a one-to-one story. This is yeah. what you guys are yeah. understood, understanding about. Yeah. So, you remember when you had a Nintendo? Yeah. Did you ever rent a game? Yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, Blockbuster, Hollywood Video. We didn't have those. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We had a little small mom-and-pop shops. They would rent movies. There was one place in particular that rented Nintendo games, and that's, like, all he rented. Okay. Uh, Sega, too, but, like, you get the idea. Yeah. So, he was making a killing, right? Like, he's the only game in town. Right. So, you kind of had to go there. You had to go to the world-famous Nintendo Mart. Gotcha. (laughs) (laughs) Which, if it was called that, they'd get sued to high heavens right now, but... He changed it later. Okay. To Game Shop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> More copyright friendly. Got it. Right. He changed it after GameStop took off, so it was just weird. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so apparently he had a side hustle moving some stuff out the back. I don't know how illegal the stuff was, but the FBI was like... Stop that shit. <laughs> <laughs> we traced all of this instantly. It's not that hard. Yeah, it was like a secret shopper thing where it's like, bro, you, oh. you literally just sold me like... <laughs> 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 it was not even hidden. It was not even hidden at all. 
<laughs> so that's fucking crazy. Then they found out that he also frequented the pulga. So they already had a case on him. And they're like, all right. Well, <laughs> well you, now you're trying to sell bootleg copies of Fantastic Four. You got to fucking wrap it up now. Yeah. I, he actually did time for it. Ooh. Yeah. It's like, well, well th- sorry. The fact that he got like, it, that's big time, small time. That reminds me of the time that my buddy and a friend of his got uh, $3,000 fines a piece for pirating music at college. Like who gets in that era of like 2009 or whatever, who gets busted for fucking music piracy and actually charged? I don't know. No, nobody fucking nobody did, but they did $3,000 a piece. And for college, that's a fucking lot of money. It wasn't until I was in high school that I um, started illegally downloading stuff. I used using Kazaa and stuff like that. Um, but before that, like it all went through Alfred's house. I, me, <laughs> Edward, uh, JJ. Was, was I, he just the arbiter of stolen goods? Yeah, he yeah. had the fastest internet. He's the only one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it boiled down to. <laughs> he was Bro, the this only is one. a three-day download for me. For you, it's two minutes. <laughs> hey, okay. He had DSL. One hundred percent. He had DSL, and we had dial-up. That's night and day for you youngins out there. <laughs> that's night and day. But Your phone is faster than DSL, guys. <laughs> Shit. DSL it wasn't bad, though. DSL was pretty damn good. That's DSL is what made the internet the internet. Like, actually watching YouTube videos and Flash videos were an actual thing you could do versus just waiting the 30 minutes you had to for a Flash video. I try to bring that up to people. Imagine waiting 30 minutes for your favorite viral video. Imagine waiting seven minutes for a TikTok. That's about the time frame and the fucking valuation conversion that it was. For your videos at the time when the internet was developed. I kind of wanted to come back a little bit sometimes. Just slow down? Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> I kind of want to make a sandwich, but I don't want to pause the video. That's true. Yeah, but, there's sometimes I'll put a video on a loop <laughs> just because it's I've heard it once and I can just leave it looping. It's not so annoying. Yeah, but I don't want to give Ben Shapiro that many views. God damn it! <laughs> Are you the one who sent it to him, JJ? God dang it! God, I hate that guy. I hate that Bob Barker. <laughs> um... Bob Barker? It's, fr- it's <laughs> um, Billy Madison reference. No, Happy Gilmore reference. Fuck, Thank I you. lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> that was so dumb. Um, FBI. No, no, it wasn't uh, FBI. I, I was going to say something along what JJ was saying. Um, no, Bulgas uh, have just become, I mean, they were very important culturally um, then, but now it's become like, it's this weird mix of, I want to go to a pulga now, like up here. I only go to them in my hometown, which is yeah. different. Right. Um, because my hometown is 98% Hispanic. And I'm he- hearing like in like Austin and San Antonio, they're becoming like hipster mechas. Absolutely. I, I was looking at pictures of them and I yeah. was I looked at ones that were in Texas and so, and even L.A. And some of them were just, you know, when you see the straw hat, but like the nice straw hat that the white girls wear sometimes. I saw a lot of those in the, the gardening it, hat. Yeah. From Sam's <laughs> <laughs> or Costco. But these are high class ones. The, the, the mesh is finer. They're, they're from Sam's and Costco. <laughs> no, I saw a lot of those and a lot of book bags and, and totes and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, oh, I don't know. if I, 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 I fear that if I go to one now that it would have lost all of its charm. And I say that because a big portion of the thing that I run into when it comes to the resale market – when it comes to thing, people finding like cards and uh, old valuables and collectibles, I because I like going to like Goodwill, I like mm-hmm. go into thrift stores and stuff, and doing that route sometimes. A lot of that actually got taken away from me. Um, going to thrift stores, at least thrifting, Why? Uh, because it's become uh, fashionable. Well, that's what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. Knowledge has become fashionable, except for Goodwill. <laughs> I still go to some ratty ass Goodwills. You got <laughs> uh, but it's not only that, but they price match the internet. And so people – and they can find the value of anything pretty much if they look it up very briefly. And so you'll be like, oh, I found this golf club. Well, this golf club is $99 on eBay or on Amazon or on uh, somewhere, you know, and people are finding the actual retail market for it. But back in the day, you could just be like, oh, I've bought this bag of uh, golf clubs for 20 bucks or 10 bucks because they were all ready and I found a, a diamond in the rough. Now they're looking at every single one. Price evaluating, and then they're putting it against eBay where people are putting ridiculous prices on ridiculous shit or things that would never sell for that price. They're just doing it because they can. And so I fear that people will be a little more fine tooth comb with the stuff that they're putting out there. You know, if they're putting up knockoff toys, sure, those are going to be five, ten bucks. But if they're putting out like antiques, 
those antiques aren't going to be $20, $30. They're going to be $50, $100. And that's what I'm afraid of. Well, when, when I was um, when I was dating someone, her aunts actually had – they ran one of the – and this wasn't a pulga. It was literally just a white person flea market Yeah, because it was in um, Floresville. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were telling us that, the, that there's people from Austin that they come and they buy all the antiques and all the trinkets and they buy it here for $20. Mm-hmm. And then they resell it downtown for $300 yep. or something like yeah. that. Yep. And that ruins a lot of the stuff because say, those same people look for the valuable things. So if you don't go there first thing in the morning, you're going to lose out on all the sweet, sweet deals or even just the good quality stuff. I mean, but you always had to go early, early in, in the morning, morning anyway. Yeah. To get the three stick nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> because they were also, this is all mom and pop stuff. Like all this stuff, the reason Pulgas are also like very popular with uh, Hispanic people is they're also very not very big on getting their license to sell food and things like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Unless it's the best food, though. That's I thing. gave so many people food poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing people talk about oh it's so gross the food there it's like if they were disgusting they'd be out of business no hey man my frito me. pies were amazing exactly <laughs> exactly if they're using their bare i ass overstuffed hands, that frito bag all right <laughs> if they're using their bare ass hands and they're putting everything in there and that shit is delicious and you don't get a stomach bug after the third time they're trustworthy in my book that's fine i've given myself food poisoning with more common they're things. also making like the dirtiest shit. Like, I'm not mean that they're making it dirty, like their hands are dirty. I'm saying, like, when I went to the Pulga in the 90s, it would be shit like tripas and menudo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. They're not, they're not making prime shit. rib in this There's piece. still a lady that sells tripas at the Pulga back home. That, <laughs> that's, like, the only place my dad will eat that from. <laughs> All these other places are gross. <laughs> tripas is fine... <laughs> basically guts. Pig for, stomachs. Yeah. Or cow stomachs. Yeah. yeah. Haggis. No, I'm like, no, no, my uh, my uh, my little niece who's half white, half Mexican, she's like pure Latina. She's like, I want the hexagon meat. <laughs> <laughs> and so because the honeycomb, the inside of a, of a cow stomach is like a honeycomb. And she likes that stuff, man. I can't do it no more. That's when people got mad. They got sad that I didn't like menudo. And I'm like, yeah, menudo's great. Fucking tripe. Tripas are fucking disgusting. They're too chewy. They're not meat. So, yeah, chitlins you know, for, for you like, African. You like the the, I've never had them crispy. I've only had them in soup. I've only had them soft. Oh, really? Like yeah. that we usually usually only have them crispy. Oh, no, yeah. I only have them soft in menudo. I, I don't we don't my, my so my dad's a real picky eater when it comes to meat. Um he had a lot of shitty cuts growing up on the farm. And so he only eats like filet mignon, t- and not even that. He used to eat T-bones, like not even anymore. Filet mignon, he don't eat anything with fat on it. Like he don't fuck with it. So like cow tongues, brains, eyes, I don't fuck with either. They were just never around our house. And so and then my mom's the opposite. My mom's eat pig's feet and she'll eat the cartilage and shit and oxtails. And she's fine with that. So I, I kind of live in a world of in both. Between. Yeah. Yeah. But I won't do like the eyeballs. I'll do cachetes. That's delicious. But I won't do eyeballs. I won't do brain. I won't do lengua. Uh, it's just I can't get past the the mental block of that kind of stuff. So you don't have to see it when it's shredded in front of you. Nah, yeah. but well, the eyeball of it. No, yeah, but like yeah. lengua, I could tell it's a tongue meat. Yeah. I can look at it and I'm like that is too dense. That is someone's something's tongue. That's why you cover it with tomato and cilantro? No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. Fat is delicious, Serenity. Fat is delicious. Well, I found this random tour of uh, Pulga in Dallas, and I uh, just thought we'd take a look. Of course, they have the Mexican music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Corona Piñata. Oh, the Piñata place here in Austin closed down. Well, there's a couple, and one of them was racist. Oh yeah, I probably bought from the racist dude. Yeah, like, like a lot of these candies are really hard to find, like in an actual gas station. And some of them are easier now because yeah. they're getting more popular. Full ass dresses. The fucking dresses. <laughs> I gotta say, some of the Pulga models, like the the um. What are they called? Uh, mannequins. It. Yeah. Some man- Some of those mannequins are fucking curvaceous as the, shit. The leatherworks. Oh, I love really? the leatherworks. <laughs> Pouches and chanclas and all sorts of nice things. Hell yeah. Oh, man. I didn't know they made hats now with your, with your name on it. Oh, look at the shirt. Sure. <laughs> that one's yeah. in Dallas. So I ain't going that far for all that. <laughs> well, we have them here. I've been actually been trying. Oh, man. I-, I want this shirt. I was just scrolling. <laughs> El ca. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was that a fucking? <laughs> <laughs> oh look, oh, illegal no, dog. Actually, <laughs> legal dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
That's how my friend got his. Puppies in a box. <laughs> it's a fucking. Uh, There's the, the drunk birds. Brooke Shearing's bird. Loki wanted one. Yeah, like a little nice trinkets. Nail jewels, Bum earrings, earrings. makeup that'll green your skin and shit. Bunnies. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Sunday, you didn't yeah. expect the rabbits? I didn't expect the rabbits. Tell them about the rabbits. I never, <laughs> I, never made, I never made it to the wildlife section of La Fulga, apparently. Dude, you can buy a whole ass goats and cows sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. It would straight up be like a fairy tale. Cow for sale. I need to make bread. <laughs> uh, I, I know you take these magic beans. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy magic beans before I buy a goat. <laughs> you play these in Loteria, you'll never lose. <laughs> That's so funny, man. Uh, I've never been to a pulga in California. I actually have only been to the shitty part of California, the desert. But I do think it's funny that uh, Tina is like, why is it so bougie? Yeah. <laughs> is that a California one? Yeah, she's from California. No, that one, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know where that one no. That was in Houston, actually. Yeah. But no. I do want that Ku shirt. <laughs> uh, like, like, <laughs> awesome with the Edgar cut? No. Uh, <laughs> see, because like, you're talking about... Oh, because it's a taquache. <laughs> uh, <laughs> took me a while. <laughs> that took me the entire time. No, um, you were talking about Loteria. The reason why the other portion reminds me of like why I was able to do that is because the church would set up booths, booths where mm-hmm. people sold stuff. And so at church, my grandma would set up her booth and she'd have a bunch of uh, fake jewelry. So that's what her thing. But then my grandma, she was huge, huge, huge on yard sales. So uh, uh, ours was kind of more so yard sale and then the church thing than the pulga. So like my grandma back in the day, she used to work at a – it's like a Goodwill processing or like uh, maybe Salvation Army or whatever. And so she would get – they would get big donations and they have to sort the donations, make sure everything is nice and on the up and up and there's no holes and things of that sort. But what they would do is that they would get a bunch of donations from people who passed away, old ladies, old dudes or whatever, with really nice jackets, right? And jackets and coats, fur coats, real fur coats, whatever. And a lot of times they would have valuables inside the coats – that they kept their cash, they kept their jewelry, their diamonds, their pearls to keep them out of prying eyes and prying hands. And so my grandma, while sorting them, just to make sure you're checking everything, make sure everything looks good, would find random jewels and perhaps, you know, put them away in her pocket and uh, would sell them at the yard sale. And she would make fucking bank off of real diamonds and real jewels. So... That was a hustle she had for a while on the side. So when I think of like good yard sales and like I look at yard sales and I drive by sometimes and I'm like, that one sucks. That one sucks. That one's got all the goods because they have everything laid out perfectly. I know me a good yard sale. That's not an issue. What happened? This one restarted. Ah, fuck that one. Uh, But that's the chat. You can you can I can still see it. You can still see it. uh, I I don't I I do want to know where. Like a little bit of a description of what Tina uh, thinks pulgas look like, because uh, the only the first one I found in California was this nice one in uh, Oakland. Fucking Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, it's on the floor, but those all look like designer bags. Yeah, uh, they're designer esque. <laughs> all right, hey, they they might be poach instead of coach. All right, they just look nice. I like he. I, I'm, I'm sad you don't have the chat right there. This is my pulgar was in Red Barn in Brandonton, Florida. I remember buying the original VHS release of Star Wars and a pair of bounty balls that looked like boobs when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I know those balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have um, an, they have the two circles and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and That's then when you squish cool. them, it does make a nipple. <laughs> What? I don't know why they're shaped like that. They just, they really do. I know exactly which one it was. Oh, well. Mine was green. <laughs> <laughs> I never had any titty bouncy balls, to be fair, unfortunately. So, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought again. Um, but no, when he's saying that that's where he found Star Wars, that's actually like a really popular way that a lot of broke people found out about Star Or no, maybe not broke is the right word, but like we, JJ on another podcast talked about how hard it was to find certain VHSs. Right. And several people in the chat said, or in the answers that they gave said, I would not know about Star Wars if it wasn't for finding the VHS in the Pulga because it wasn't on TV. What, in well, the it, ma- it also makes sense too because – Jackie everybody- Chan. 
Jackie Chan was another popular Puglia staple. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> And like, as you can imagine, that Star Wars was obviously a huge, massive thing. VHS sold a bunch of VHSs, but the fact that everybody had one, you could just get rid of them, and yeah. like that was something that you probably get rid of first. It's like, ah, Star Wars, I've seen them, I know them, because it wasn't the same thing as it is now, right? Obviously, so you're like, okay, I'll give those away, I'll sell those, someone will buy them. Everyone likes Star Wars; they're good movies, and so then you're able to buy them, and they're probably the cheapest one, and so you're probably like, oh yeah, Star Wars, what's that about? I never had a chance to see it collect for five dollars and you got all three of them you're good to go so that's how i was and then yeah lucky shot was like i bought a lot of rap mixtapes so oh yeah we did i i didn't my didn't buy a lot of music but it was definitely the only place that my dad could find the hanos and corridos because uh walmart was not selling it yep <laughs> that's uh, oh also anime Bootleg oh, anime. Yo, oh, for sure. Oh, there shit. Were, yeah. Sub so, or sub? <laughs> dub, because they would bootleg. This was later on in life when the internet was powerful enough. Right. <laughs> People would download the Latino dub of Ranma, mm -hmm. and they would burn it onto DVDs, and they would sell that at Pulga. Mm -hmm. The guy that I worked with at the casino bought his, like... Latino dub Ranma, the entire series plus the movies right. at the Pulga. And he's like, I remember the story because <laughs> he didn't. By the time he watched Ranma, Mexico was censoring the, the nudity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he was like, I wasn't aware that Ranma was a pretty horny show. God. <laughs> <laughs> because I only saw it on TV and like, right. yeah, Ranma's like throwing down and then he's got a shirt off or whatever, but he's in dude form, so it's fine. And then they start speaking in Japanese for some reason and they throw water on him and he becomes a girl. And I'm like, oh, they cut that part out in the Mexican. <laughs> so, so now he still gets hard whenever he hears Japanese. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I do for other reasons. but uh, <laughs> No, man, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, I didn't even think about anime and how much you'd find. How much you just find of it. Oh, well, random was definitely ones. the only place you could find Robotech for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of big staples that... Um, I mean, I don't even know where you found it if you had, like, a Hastings and shit like that. But definitely, like, you couldn't find it um, anywhere else in Eagle Pass or Texas without uh, Pulgas for sure. Because that's the thing. They, people weren't looking for them. Like, uh, yeah. like, so I looked up, like, where did people find anime? And, like, that is where they found it was on secondary bootleg markets. And so the history that was told in the article I read was – it was white college teenagers that did that, right? And then a couple of Japanese teenagers and co college age people, you know. And that story painted the narrative in America, but then a huge thing that they uh, forgot about or didn't bring up was the fact that they pulled a lot of the shit from Mexico. <laughs> like yeah. they pulled a lot of it that was subbed in English and it was either in Spanish or in Japanese. And so people would go across and pick it up and take it to America. And then that's how we get. It was like early '90s when like Akira was real popular, and then Toonami came out, and then ever then that just fucking blew up anime everywhere. So, yeah, Akira is known as the anime that like made it transcend it, just not being a children's medium in general. Right. Which is funny because uh, it's one of the most disturbing animes. That, like right off the <laughs> it's bat, it's insane. It, people, I mean, they're sharing the meme now. There's yeah. that like um, that the bell. Meme. Leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Or whatever. And people are like, ah, it's funny. But then, like, people forget, I think, people that aren't into it as much, forget that, like, near the end, it just there's a human biomass of glob just taking over the fucking world. I mean, that reference absurd. came out in South Park. Like, that's how big that meme has gotten. Right. I mean, the slide, the fucking Akira slide, there's a billion of them. We're going to have one eventually. Chila G yes. in the opening, I'm going to anim have key animate the Akira slide. Oh, I thought slide. we were going to do that. <laughs> uh, we'll figure it out. But I'll, I'll do that. I got a mountain bike. <laughs> no, we'll get a horse. We'll power slide a horse. Um, <laughs> like right, that so one Indian movie? The, the yeah, one yeah, the one you guys under the train? <laughs> yes. Uh, so Christina did tell me where her... Uh, Leave me alone! <laughs> Sorry. Where her, what pulga she goes to, so we'll see if that appears on TikTok. Uh -huh. But uh, while this is the last, or well, one of the more uh, recent California pulgas that I found, and I'm like, yeah, no, dude, fuck Disney. Take me here. Let's see. <laughs> That just for that. 
What was that? Hold on, I was too busy worried about the audio. Keep going. No, let it roll. Let it roll. Oh my god. <laughs> That's just a lot there. I could go for some right now, honestly. See, but look, you can get a cheap Squishmallow. But look how nice that looks. Like, don't tell me it's bougie. Well, this is in LA, but still. The poor um, guy with me, the, the fashion district. Oh, that's the fashion district. Yeah, they, they, they've bougied it up so they can make it a little more accessible. But, hey. I'm okay it's with LA. That. I don't imagine they would not bougie it up. Right. Um, JJ, do you have any other weird stories of uh, pulga shenanigans? Um, hmm. I don't think so. The only animal that uh, I ever saw someone get at the pulga was a dog. Although he looked exactly like the dragon dog from uh, NeverEnding Story. <laughs> <laughs> that's what a lot of the dogs look like. Yeah. The crusty white Mexican dog. That's, yeah. that's yeah. a family staple in most Mexican families, the crusty white dog. We never had one. You never had My grandma had a crusty dog. Budgie, budgie. The crusty it, white dog. It's it always to be the 105. Ladies. It's always the Goyles. Oh, yeah. They say behind every strong Latina is a crusty white dog. <laughs> yes. Um, Our house was all boys. I boys, also did think boys, it was funny. The good luck dragon from Never Ending Story does have, like, the, the gunky the dog The gunky eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Falcor. His name Falcor. is Falcor. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Man. That's also what he named the dog. Took my daughter to the blue god. She was not feeling this ferret ball toy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the one where it like, chases itself. Let me see. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's in Roseville. That's a Zigzagoon. It's <laughs> a Pokemon. Oh, man. I love those things, man. Like, that's the thing. Uh, Olvera Street, we have actually clips in our pre roll of the show. Olvera Street, it's not quite a pulga, but it's like a little street market with a lot of the similar trappings of it. And a lot of those cheap knockoff toys. I have self control now because I've been so many times, but like, I would love to buy. One of those like ninja sets, like even now, where it's like it has the size and the swords and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want, like, if I, we were to go and do that top five Pulga thing, mm-hmm. I would buy cheap knockoff toys so hard. I'd see if I could find more three stick nunchucks. Oh, five stick <laughs> Oh, that, there's, all, there's a knife guy every time. Every time. Say, every, it's a mall ninja guy. I love mall ninja shit. Have you, have you ever looked that up on Reddit? Mall, look up, if you could Google mall, mall ninja shit. I mean, I, I know what it is, and you find the same shit at the pool. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I want to have a fucking dagger with a blade going into my forearm and a blade going outwards. That's also nunchucks. That's also a taser. taser that's also a lighter. Like, these are the type of things I want in my life. This is a ninja star, but also it's a pocket knife. Right. <laughs> look at it. See? Look at it. I want that. Well, that looks like just like a kitchen knife. It is just a kitchen knife, and they added shit to it. But I want, like, the wool. There, God, there was a. How do you store that? <laughs> on the wall. I think it's on the wall. That w- but that still takes. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I have the great. I-, I have a great idea. What are uh, we doing? Battle with mall ninja? No, swords? We would, oh. we, somebody would die. Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably die. Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> They're not sharp. <laughs> <laughs> somebody would die. Um, we needed something to hang behind us. Let's hang these shiny weapons. <laughs> <laughs> we're not getting Put neons neon. on them. Oh, we're, we're not getting neon mall ninja swords. No, all right, all right, all right. Get one ninja sword and one like display case and put neon around the display case. Look at. <laughs> I saw this in it was like in a you know those like gun enthusiast books yep. that people can get those pamphlets whatever. Guns and ammo? Yeah, so something along those lines. Um it might have even been guns and ammo. Um they had a mall ninja sword like section of that, like every other page it was like guns, guns, rifles, rifles, and then it had like nunchucks and shit like that, right? I will never forget the phrasing I heard with somebody had Wolverine claws that were like jagged and they had skulls on the back and the description the first sentence of the of the description was vanquish your enemies with these blades on your head I'm like what enemies does anybody have where you have to solve it with fucking Wolverine blades on your knuckles like you, you have clearly you never faced the chupacabra <laughs> <laughs> is that a foe though or that a hunt That's that seems a foe. like more of a hunt Again, you've never fought one. <laughs> because, like, if Ben Shapiro needed to be taken it's, down, if I needed, if we had to do battle, yes, I'd get the fucking Wolverine bone scully hands. But I have no other enemies. 
I don't like a lot of people. And, until Andrew Tate laughs at our clip tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and look at these fat losers. <laughs> <laughs> or however he talks. <laughs> He's hey, got like a pseudo. It's not about quite it. <laughs> posh, but it's weird because he lived a little bit in America. He sounds like a dork weirdo. Yeah, that's but right. He Andrew lived Tate, in the UK. Loser. <laughs> You're a balding loser. At least I'm brave enough to just be bald. And be like, oh, I don't have hair anymore. He's bald in most of the videos too. Bro. I know, but he's <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, I'm masculine, I'm bald. Shut up, you stupid bastard. TJ's he not here to fucking rein me in again. <laughs> TJ was playing too much middle ground for me in that conversation. <laughs> just for the record. Except I was just TJ trying to let real. TJ talk. Oh, yeah, I felt T- bad about that. <laughs> I did feel bad. Every time TJ was like, and uh, another. He's going to say some bullshit, that's why. But anyway. Uh okay, on the subject of pulgas, I have a question for you guys. Sure, go for it. Have you ever had a new bike? No. Huh? <laughs> so I can tell you right now, all of mine, including the one in my apartment right now, is from the pulga. <laughs> I think my second bike was new, but my first one was not. All I, of mine. Uh, yeah, I think the, I think my dad got me a mountain bike. He said this is going to be your bike, and I had it for a while. I had it for a while. That was my mountain bike for a while. But, um, no, the first one, for the first one with the training wheels, I had to think about it. I go, yep, the trike I had was not new. It was a hand-me-down at the very least, yeah. So, I, I, only, I didn't know how to ride a bike till I was like 12, 13, though. It was way later when I learned how to ride a bike. When I, I learned younger than that. Yeah, and most people did. It's like, I learned I mean, to drive. Yeah, that's how he got away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learned to drive late. I learned how to ride a bike late. I did learn to drive late. Yeah. But that's because my dad sucks as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> what did your dad do? He just gets mad. No. Oh. Like, really easily. Doesn't explain shit. Yeah. Y- just standard Mexican shit. Got it. <laughs> the, the chingadera on the thing on the side. Oh, the thing the on the side of the, of the yeah. middle next to the left. That, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's a universal I, thing, right? Yeah. Mexican dads is the vagueness of the descriptions. When I learned to ride a bike, right? Mm-hmm. Like, my dad started teaching me, but he got mad at me because I did something wrong. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't remember at this point. Right. But, like, he left for work and i was just kind of like bummed out because like my neighbor kid my friends were riding and i was like i can't ride and then they fucking taught me (laughs) and then i was riding like no problem my mom was like oh so your dad's lessons kicked in i was like nah fuck that guy (laughs) eddie from down the street taught me yeah my dad (laughs) he said all i had to do was believe (laughs) believe in the heart of the car (laughs) my dad tried once my brother tried once and then my buddy from college he taught me how to drive pretty okay and then yeah i was was able to pass it it was fine but also my dad was a truck driver so his standards of like Okay, you can drive now. Yeah. We're pretty high. Yeah. Like I've told people, my dad took me out to like this empty parking lot Mm -hmm. and he found like a sizable rock, but like not a boulder. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, you could, you would notice it if it was like on your carpet. Right. And he's like, I want you to put your driver's side tire. Mm hmm. Right next to that fucking rock. Get it as close as you fucking can. This was my first time out. <laughs> I was about to, I was about to get a screen four, but I can't. But Tina is saying my dad printed out instructions with pictures, and we had drills. <laughs> she a football coach? <laughs> I mean, the only thing that I mean, I didn't get, but I, because of friends in the army, I know they had to do was like they weren't allowed. To go for their driver's license so they could back a trailer up. And that is actually way more That's difficult. super than fucking hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like physics and, and geometry. When I got it, like, going forwards, like, okay, cool. You put the, the tire right next to the rock. Mm-hmm. Proud of you. Do it backwards now. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> well, yeah. guys, I think this is basically going to be our <laughs> show for the day. Uh, I do thank you all for coming out. I do thank you all for watching us yell out over each other for an hour. Um, it was 45 minutes. It's fine. And, and just remember out there, be right. Be like me. I'm going to hit the Manscaped ad. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> yes, you need to do one. I'll probably have to just do it afterwards. But by Manscaped, you guys know where to go. But I got to do an ad and add it in post because we ran out of time and didn't do it and we need to do it. 
But uh, thank you guys for coming out. Be sure to join Thursday for the uh, the Black Excellence, and it'll be uh, how Asian and Black cultures intertwine and Black toxicity in general. I guess about. Oh yeah, they got a little upset in the comments. There, <laughs> the ginger thing has caused a lot of good. And some problems, and they had some beef that they wanted to, to to hash out amongst the black community. Something that we can't need to hash out because we're all Hispanic Americans here, uh, Mexican Americans here. I mean, I, I didn't want to, uh, like, I saw one right before I came up, and it was like, black people have, like, it wasn't a movie producer that said this. And I was like, well, I mean, we're not, we're being whimsical about this topic. Right. Everyone yeah. is weird. <laughs> Everyone takes everything so literally and personally and that's what I mean by be more correct. Be like us. Have some nuance. Believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams. Hit it, Marcos. We're good. We're out of here. But did I not hit it hard enough? What happened? I don't know. Are you hitting there. intro or outro? End show. Did it? Nope. It's, there we go. <laughs> I have to like <laughs> really fucking hit no, it. I think though. you pressed it too many times. I think you didn't hit it hard enough the, the first time. The party lights come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dude. we're out of here. Yeah. We're getting out of here. No, we're fading out, man. We just keep talking until we fade out entirely. Into oblivion. No one. No one. Is that a problem? No, yeah, we're gone. Yeah, we're gone. Nuance is delicious, though. No, don't touch it. Don't touch it. No touch it, I said. Leave it. Move the mouse, mouse away. God, I do everything correctly.